Okay, welcome to my comparison of the latest DJI Action 3 and the GoPro Hero 11. As you can tell, these are direct competitors and are two of the best traditional action cameras on the market. And due to this, they have a ton more in common than they have different, but there are some subtle differences that really affect the usability between these two cameras. And that's what I want to take a deeper look into in this video to help identify which one is better for you. And full disclosure, DJI did send me both these cameras, but all thoughts and opinions are my own. If you want to know which one's the smallest and lightest, that's going to be the DJI Action 3. This camera comes in at 144 grams and the GoPro 11, 153. And when it comes to the actual dimensions, they're essentially identical in all of them, except for the height of the camera. The DJI is a little bit shorter, giving it a smaller overall footprint. As I'm sure you guys noticed, they both have a front-facing display, which I love. It's a very useful thing to have. But the one on the DJI is a touch-enabled display. I will admit that most of the time when I'm changing the settings of the camera, I'm doing it on the back display. But in those scenarios that it's mounted somewhere and you can't access the back, it is useful to be able to change these via the front touchscreen. And with the GoPro, that is simply not an option. Both these cameras have replaceable uh, lenses over the camera. So if you damage it, scratch it, you can easily just swap it out and not have to replace the entire camera. Now, the way that you access the battery battery, SD card, and the USB port on these cameras is via these uh, waterproof doors. The mechanism of these doors is quite different, and to me, one of them is vastly superior. So the way you open the doors on the DJI is via these tabs. You just push on it in the direction that it indicates, and the door easily pops up and swings open. But the latch on the GoPro door is completely different, and it's about five times more difficult to actually open. Something else that looks very similar between these two cameras, but is vastly different in practice, is the buttons. So they both have a power button and a record button. And here, GoPro has the advantage. The buttons are much more tactile and easy to click even with gloves on. And to be brutally honest, the buttons on the Action 3 are absolutely terrible. They're just so difficult to press and they have next to no travel. And if you're wearing gloves, forget about it. It is impossible to push these buttons. The next major physical difference is the mounting hardware. So the GoPro has these uh, GoPro finger mounts that fold out from the bottom of the camera. And DJI has this magnetic quick release mounting system that I'm a huge fan of. And this magnetic mounting system allows you to very easily and efficiently move the camera from one spot to another. It literally takes one second to mount the camera. And real quick, before moving on to the image quality, both these cameras, you can buy them in a combo package. And in my opinion, the combo package of the DJI is significantly better because of this. They give you three extra batteries and this extremely convenient charging case for the batteries. Okay, this is 4K 30, both stabilized and linear. This is essentially the best settings for each camera. The DJI has HDR mode, 4K, 30fps. They're both in linear with stabilization. And the GoPro is in, it doesn't have HDR, so it's in 5.3K. Okay, now we're testing out 60 FPS, both in 4K and linear. Okay, now we're trying out better stabilization. Still in 4K, but we have Rocksteady Plus and we have the Boost on the GoPro. Okay, so like I said, more cropped in, but also more stabilized. Now we can do some jogging. Running. Okay, so now we're just in 4K 30 regular stabilization, but I have the ultra wide lens on both. So if you want to vlog, for example, here's that same 
arm length distance on both, regular stabilization, widest lens on both. You can see the distortion right there. All right, now this is 4K, 10-bit color on both. Now, at this point, the video should be finished. We compared the physical and video quality of these two cameras side by side. But because we're talking about a GoPro, we have to also test out the reliability and overheating. So to test out how long these cameras would last, I put them both on 4K 30 FPS. At the 30 minute mark, the GoPro had 62% battery left. And at the one hour mark exactly is when the Hero 11 overheated. And it overheated with 18% battery remaining. I gotta say, I know GoPros have an issue with overheating, but it's the middle of the winter right now. I had my window open and the room was about 60 degrees and it's still overheated. Now the Action 3 at the 30 minute mark had 71% battery left. At the one hour mark, it was still going just fine. And it had 39% battery compared to 18% with the GoPro. And the camera went all the way until 93 minutes when it eventually died from a dead battery. So to put all this together, in terms of the physical design, they are very similar. The Action 3 is a little bit smaller all around, weighs a bit less. I like the touch-enabled front display on the Action 3, but the buttons on the GoPro are really good. For the video quality, the GoPro does have a higher resolution at 5.3K, but the Action 3 has HDR mode. The electronic image stabilization in both cameras is top-notch. I really can't complain about either one. They both have 10-bit video to allow you to capture more data and give you more flexibility in post-production. But in my opinion, these two cameras really separate themselves in terms of daily usability. As we saw, the GoPro likes to overheat and the battery life on the Action 3 is significantly better. And speaking of significantly better, the magnetic mounting system of the Action 3 is also a reason in and of itself that I would choose this camera. Also, if you plan on using an external mic with these cameras, the Action 3, you just gotta plug it in via USB Type-C, but with the GoPro, you can't do that. You need a expensive adapter that GoPro sells. And finally, we have price. These two cameras do not cost the same. The Action 3 by itself is $329, and if you buy the bundle that includes the very convenient uh, battery charging case, it is only $439 altogether. For the GoPro, by itself, it is $447, and its bundle is $540. That is quite a significant price difference between these two cameras. That's gonna do it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll leave both these cameras linked below if you guys wanna check it out, and I'll see you guys in the next one.